a little bit of political news for those who care. This is a little map I thought was very colorful from The Economist today. And what does it spell? Ooh, a lot of red. Red is Republican, and the Democrats are in serious, serious trouble in the November elections. So they need to bring things back. Yet another reason. The reason I show this not because I care about politics. I don't. I think they're all incompetent. There's a few good ones, but very few and far between. But the reason this is important is the Democrats need to pull a rabbit out of the hat for the economy to get voters to vote for them again. That's it. That's why I share this stuff. All roads lead to making investment decisions. With I don't really care about politics either, but this gentleman here on my screen is making a lot of good points about what's going on and what potentially is going to be going on into the future making a very, very good analysis, in my opinion. We're going to go over a couple more things by this guy that he's pointed out. Just remember, I've been telling you this long before he started bringing it up because all the information, almost all of it, is in the charts. Let's check it out. Hey, guys. It is Greg again here with a little bit of an update on Bitcoin and uh, the markets in general. I guess you could say that. And uh, I showed that clip of Invest Answers. If you guys haven't had a chance, he has a pretty good video on his analysis of what is going on in the markets. And I kind of have a tendency to agree with him. But I was going through here through Twitter. This is Bob Lucas. Those of you guys don't follow him. He's the guy that came up with the 60-day cycle. I do uh, follow that a little bit. Um, I do think there's some validity to it, but look at Bob here. He's very, very bearish. Very, very bearish. He's not expecting anything until the end of the year. He could be right. He could be right. Um, one of the things that's very difficult to do is to uh, be so um, objective with your analysis and make sure you're not too bullish or too bearish and you're trying to stay objective as possible. But one of the things that I'm going to be going over is uh, – you know, I'm sticking with what this way, these waves are telling me here on Bitcoin. I'm not going to go over it quite yet, but I'm going to show you some stuff. But just going through Twitter, like this tech dev guy, um, and he has a lot of followings in Twitter, but on his chart there, I'm looking at his chart. It's very difficult to read it. This is an extremely bullish count. I don't agree with that. If you're a moon boy, this is like where Bitcoin will be going ballistic to like a million dollars in about three or four years. That's the count that he has. So you can take these and make them, you know, whatever you want, you know, you can change it like that. I'm not, I would never declare anything like this publicly, personally. Um, that's just too much hopium for me. So that's just my take on it, guys. But I was just going through Twitter and, you know, usually what happens is whatever the majority are saying, usually just the opposite occurs. And it's true most of the time. But I wanted to show you some more information on from Invest Answers. I want you guys to review it. I, you guys don't have to watch the whole video. So I made some cuts and clips for you guys to watch it and check it out. So let's roll another one. Let's talk about the Fed Funds plan. This is kind of the chart of what the forecast is from The Economist. You know, step, step, 50 basis points at a time, boom, 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 all the way out to December 2022. As you say, as I say, there's no way zone is getting beyond two. So I see we're going to do 100 basis points more and then stop. Two more hikes. If they do more than that, then seatbelts because crap will hit the fan. So All right, guys. I know that uh, what Invest Answers was talking about there were is increasing the rates. He doesn't believe. He believes in September they're going to stop raising rates or there's going to be a flip. I do agree with the same thing, more or less what he's saying i've been saying it all along before Who, whoever's been here since this channel's us i started a youtube channel they know that hey i've i've been saying it for i don't know 30 60 days or something like that at least but i have a uh, article here and this is going over the this article is from february 22 the fed doesn't rule the stock market type thing uh, i don't know if i so much agree with that they could seriously do some damage but Here's the thing. This is about quantitative tightening. I wanted to go over and show you guys this. I'm going to read this portion right here. Um, most recently, the Fed raised the Fed funds rate at nine little steps 
from 0.08% in November 2015 to 2.4% in December 2018 and kept it there through July of 2019. The first five or six hikes in the Fed funds rate in 2016-18 had no sustained impact on the upward trajectory of stock prices. You see that, guys? It takes it a while to uh, take uh, to take effect for anything to be done. And right now, everybody is just panicking. As a matter of fact, let's go over to the Bitcoin chart. There's the dates. This is the date he was talking about. Right here is when it started. And look what Bitcoin did. Boom, 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 boom. The whole, almost the whole time. This is December 2019. And then Bitcoin finished this fifth wave and it did its correction right here. And I'm sure in the media, they all said this was because of, the, uh, of what the Fed did and possibly it could have been. But at the same time, look how high Bitcoin went. Doesn't it look like after something like that, Bitcoin would have been due for a correction? And if you were in here, you would have been like, Oh my gosh, look at this thing. It's going parabolic. Time to get out because you knew that was going to come. No matter what the Fed was going to do, guys, it's going to happen anyway. It might not have gone as deep. That's just one other point I wanted to make, uh, make clear for you guys to show you some other things. Got another clip coming up. Check this out. Since 1990. And as you can see, with this level of burgeoning debt, the only thing they can do is keep it low or else they shoot themselves in the foot. And that's why I say they are boxed in. Uh, the debt is so astronomically high, they cannot raise rates in a meaningful amount to control monetary policy to hurt inflation. So they have to jawbone, and they're doing a very good job of that too. Now, the only way out is by debasing the debt, thus the currency. Same old story. And this means low rates, more printing, until the dollar ultimately debases away or fails. Okay, guys, like I said, one of the thing he brought up a good point there. If you listen to it uh, closely, what he was saying, you know, is that the Fed is kind of it's trapped. They really can't do anything without raising the rates astronomically to do anything about inflation. As a matter of fact, I brought this up in a couple other videos. This right here, Emergency Price Control Act of 1942, is how they've controlled inflation in the past. And with this, when he first did it. This was Franklin Delano Roosevelt was a president back then. He did it before the, he saw the inflation coming. He actually did it before so it wouldn't become a problem. So they can do something about it. Like I said, I'm pretty sure a lot of what's going on. And I think Invest Answers, pretty smart guy knows what's going on, that this is a little, this is a smoke and mirrors for the most part. Now let's go back over to the Bitcoin chart. And now that we know when they started quantitative tightening right here in November 2015, that Bitcoin basically did a moonshot. There's the evidence for you right there, guys, right there. Look, how much percentage did it go up when they started? Let's take a look. Bitcoin went up 5,800%. I'm sure there's going to be some people who are going to say, well, this is different. This is different or anything. No, 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 it's not different. Oh, Bitcoin was in this wave and it's over here now. Okay, back to my story, guys. Check this out. Okay, Bitcoin completed these waves. What makes you think it won't be able to complete this wave? This one, two, three, four, and up for a five. One more leg right there, guys. And this is the area. This is the area right here that I'm looking for Bitcoin to go to, right in this area right here. Excuse me about this 22,000 and this red line you see that red line that's passing right through there that's a 200 week moving average passing right through there this is the 0.382 of this leg and then bitcoin is going to go back up in my opinion to a minimum of $74,000 right here after this correction is over in this area in my opinion could it go lower it could could this bitcoin just keep going down to the depths it could but the higher probability, in my opinion, is here and then complete the correction, go back up. And like I said, I think this is going to be one of the key factors right down here in this RSI. It's making that nice uh, um, waves down. It's going to do one more bump up, make that bump up, swing back down, take everything out. Correction's complete. 
It may take a little time for it to take off. It'll wander in this area for a while. So it'd be like accumulation and everybody will just say, oh, it's bear market, it's bear market, and it's still going to go down. And then it'll just start making its way up. Probably something like right over here, like this. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.